A President Obama scolding Republican senators who say that they plan to block a vote on whomever he nominates to replace the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Watch. We've almost gotten accustomed to how obstructionist the Senate's become when it comes to nominations. This will be the opportunity for uh, senators to do their job. Your job doesn't stop until you're voted out or until your term expires. I intend to do my job between now and January 20th of 2017. I expect them to do their job as well. And Hillary Clinton adding fuel to the fire, suggesting GOP opposition is rooted in racism. <laughs> Many Republicans talk in coded racial language about takers and losers. They demonize President Obama and encourage the ugliest impulses of the paranoid fringe. This kind of hatred and bigotry has no place in our politics or our country. Well, they're Rita, sick. Right? However, not all Republicans are saying that they'll automatically refuse hearings on a nominee. Senate Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley says that he won't rule it out. And Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson says he'd be willing to cast a vote in the Senate if it moves forward. Okay, so many issues, Chris. I don't know where to start. But let's start on uh, the two senators saying we're going to block him no matter what. Do you think, as some in the Republican Party do, mm -hmm. as President Obama argues that he has the right to do, sure. should he put forth a nominee, and then should the Republican senators have that right to vote him down? Sure, absolutely. That's how our system works. He is president until January 20th of next year. He should go ahead and appoint um, whoever, or, or nominate whoever he wants to nominate. And the Republicans, he said the Republicans should do their job. They should do their job, and they should prevent President Obama from getting another pick for the Supreme Court. And if they want to take it up in the Judiciary Committee, then go ahead and take it up, and it should be voted down there and not go to the full Senate for, uh, for a vote. But if it does go there, it will likely be voted down uh, anyway. They're more interested in the political food fight. These claims of racism are in the codes and the speaking in clicks and things. Yeah. It's so this outrageous. Is a, this is a president who is a constitutional scholar. We know that this problem <laughs> is a political problem. It is not a constitutional pro problem. Right. He has the right as the president to mm -hmm. nominate someone. The Senate has the right to act on it right. or not. And the problem is that he ke they know he's going to put forward somebody who's not acceptable to the Senate, who was elected by the people. Well, so if he would listen to what the people want, which the people want right. somebody who's more moderate and not a leftist, then he wouldn't have this problem. Well, Rachel, your husband's a congressman in the House, and yeah. he doesn't obviously vote on Supreme sure. uh, Court nominees, but your family watches Washington, D.C. intently. Yeah. When you look at 2005, you saw how President Obama behaved as a senator with the nomination of Alito. That's I mean, right. he voted to filibuster him, and he voted against Robert, not because he said that he wasn't qualified, but because he was conservative. So shouldn't Mitch McConnell do the same thing and say, okay, you want a filibuster? Filibuster. He won't get those votes. Absolutely. This is a this is fair game politically, but I just can't stand it. And I say this as a minority, that when they pull this race card, because we know that this is about a battle of ideas. This isn't about the color of the skin of the president or the nominees. And so it really diminishes when we have real cases of, of racism for Hillary Clinton to go and say that. That just diminishes when we have real racism well, out there. And Harris, I mean, you look at the hypocrisy that Rachel's mentioning. Miguel Estrada, blocked by the oh. Democrats, a Hispanic. Harriet Myers. I mean, we've got the card, the race card, the woman card. They're throwing everything at us. Right. Will it work? Well, you know what? This just really assumes that the American public is stupid. That it's not free thinking, no matter what the color of any of our American citizens are, the skin, um, that, that their brains are not <laughs> free thinking. And it's insulting. And, and the fact that, you know, we've seen Hillary Clinton play the woman card, and I said last week, oh, she'll play the race card next. Boom! Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here it comes. Yeah, they, they like to com compartmentalize like this because it's easy to put everybody in a box and to, to play those boxes against each other. But the fact of the matter is this is politics, and we have a lot of business to get done we have a lot of business to get done. Do they want to do it or not? Sandra, what do you think? So, Crystal, I mean, what about when you look at Chuck Grassley's words? I mean, I think we just said that he just said, why don't we just wait, right? But precisely, he said, I would wait until the nominee is made before I would make any decisions. In other words, take it a step at a time. What's mm -hmm. wrong with that? That's perfectly fine. And it goes back to the fact that this is just about politics. And, and with Democrats, I mean, the, the hypocrisy and Hillary filibustered, Barack Obama filibustered, they prevented nominees from going forward, not just for the Supreme Court, but for federal bench uh, slots also, mm -hmm. and it weren't not for double standards, liberals would have no standards at all. But the cynical use of the race card, as they, they throw this well, around there's... at the Republicans constantly, is the most vicious, mm -hmm. vulgar, okay. vile, divisive, polarizing. But and if you're looking for the real race 
this will is, it work? Well, it's been working for them thus far, and I'm hoping that the American people will just become so sick of this I'm with that you it on will that. backfire on them. It's Maybe not working it's on the women card. Remember, we saw, we see that with Hillary. She's trying so hard to throw the women card, and the young women aren't buying it. I think there's a lot of minorities out there who also are saying, oh, come, give me a break uh, with all this coded racial language stuff. You know what sure. would work if they stood up there and said, no matter what happens, we're going to create jobs? Oh. Yeah, that'd be nice right, for everybody. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the history of the two parties and racism, the Democrat Party's history of racism is shocking and appalling. Yes, it is. And this is a different <laughs> political season, so we'll see if that playbook, uh, running those old plays, will work this time. Imagine if your boss knew where you shopped, what prescription drugs you take, and whether or not you vote. Well, guess what? Some of your employers know a lot more about you than you think. What they're using your personal information for and whether it's too much Big Brother, you're not going to want to miss this.